Today I'm going to show you how to host your static website in S3 bucket with your custom domain. The first thing we're going to do is go to AWS console. So you can just go to s.amazon.com and you'll be presented with the console home. Then you search for S3 and we're going to create an S3 bucket. So click here on create bucket. And in the bucket name, you need to type in the custom domain you want to use. So for me, I have a domain that I had registered with my name that I'm not using for anything so it's going to be evgenyorubkov.com alternatively you can do www.yourdomain.com or whatever and then you scroll down a little bit and uncheck this block all public access checkbox typically it's enabled by default because you don't want anybody to access files that you store in the s3 bucket but in this case we actually do want to allow that because that's how the static site will be served to your customers here you need to acknowledge that the current settings might result in this bucket and the objects with becoming public then feel free to enable bucket versioning to make sure that you can restore to a previous variant if needed and you can leave all other settings as default unless you need to change them for some reason so here click create bucket and we have our bucket created next thing we want to do is go to properties and then scroll down and in the static website hosting section you need to click edit and enable static hosting. And then you can specify that the home page is going to be index.html and the error document is going to be error.html and just save changes. And we're going to upload them in just a second after we fix the permissions. By default, the bucket policy doesn't have any policies, so you still cannot access that. So what we need to do is go to edit and then we can just use this add a new statement button and then we choose the s3 service and instead of all actions all we need is get object so we add get object here for the principle we replace curly brackets with the star which means that anybody will be able to access files in this bucket and then for the resource we're gonna click on this copy button and add that here but the only modification we need to make is put a slash and a star to make sure that your customers can access all the routes of your static website. So now we click save changes. Finally, we're going to go to objects and actually upload the index.html and error.html or whatever website you're trying to host on here. I have these two files. We put them in here and just click upload. And now we can go back to properties and see that when we click on the link that S3 has generated for us, we can see our website. And if we try to go to some unknown route, we get an error. So we have it hosted, but it's obviously hosted under this S3 website, US West 2, Amazon, AWS.com domain. But we want to use our custom one. So what do we do? Well, since we are using AWS S3 buckets, it would make sense that we will need to have some other service that's responsible for serving our content from a custom domain. Let's just duplicate this tab in case we need some information from the S3 bucket. So the first service we are going to use is called route 53 and route 53 is responsible for domain registration and the dns mapping if you are not familiar with dns it stands for domain name system so whenever you have your website hosted somewhere by default you can only access it by its ip address for example 10.13.154.2 and obviously when you want to share your website you don't want to give out your ip address to people because they're just hard to remember you want to provide them with something more memorable like a word or a couple words stringed together. So domain name system is responsible for this mapping from the IP address to the domain name. So Route 53 allows us to both register domains and create this mapping. I already have a domain, but it's hosted in Google. So if I go to domains.google.com, and click on my domain and click DNS. So by default, Google provides us with some default name servers and default parameters. But we will have to change that after we create configuration in Route 53. So what I'm trying to say is, if you don't have a domain registered elsewhere, then you can just register a domain right here on Route 53 and then continue with this tutorial. So once you're in Route 53, what we need to do is create a hosted zone. And as you can see, a hosted zone just tells route 53 how to respond to dns queries for a domain so basically it's gonna do what 
I just told you, except in reverse. It basically means that whenever somebody goes to example.com, it's going to try to find the IP address to route this request to. We're going to create the hosted zone, put in our custom domain name, and then feel free to either put the description or skip it. And then we just want the public one and click create. Assuming you created a domain elsewhere, you actually need to go to that provider and change your name servers. So in my case, I'm going to Google, click DNS, click custom name servers. And I had already done this before, so I'm already using those. But if you didn't, you would click manage name servers and just replace these with whatever AWS provided you with. Well, actually, looks like it provided me with new ones. We can click on these hosted zone details and just copy them one by one and click save. I should warn you that it may take some time to propagate. Usually Route 53 would say that you still need to have this verified if you're using a domain from elsewhere. So it can take up to 48 hours before that verification completes. Usually it does take maybe an hour. So if something doesn't work, just you need to wait. Anyways, so now that we're done with the name servers, we actually don't need to go back to our domain provider anymore. The rest of the configuration is going to be done here in AWS. So the next thing we want to do is have these domains actually map to our S3 bucket. So what we need to do is click create record. Feel free to leave subdomain as empty. We're going to alice it to S3 website endpoint. And then you choose the region where your bucket was created. And then here in the endpoint, we just choose whatever it populates. If you are paying attention, then you see that this endpoint is different from when we go to our S3 bucket properties and static website hosting. So here we have our full bucket name and then dot and the Amazon domain name. But here it's just that latter part. It will automatically find your S3 bucket based on your domain name. That's why we needed to have the S3 bucket created with the same name as the domain name you wanted to use. So here we click create records and we we're pretty much done. So now if you go to evgenyorubkov.com, it's going to say that it doesn't work yet. But that's just because, as I told you, the DNS changes may take a while to propagate because the way it works is there are different DNS servers across the world. So depending on where you access your website from, it just may not have been available in that DNS server yet. It is also possible that your browser is trying to access your website using HTTPS, using secure HTTPS connection. But one catch with the approach we just did is that it can only work with HTTP. So let's try that. Well, it still doesn't work. And again, that's just because it didn't propagate it. But how do we make our connection secure so the website doesn't present customers with a warning about your website being insecure? Unfortunately, we have to do something else. So let's duplicate this again. And now we're going to use something called CloudFront. So we click CloudFront here, and then we're going to create a CloudFront distribution. So here we choose the origin domain as our S3. And then it tells us that, hey, instead of using the S3 bucket as a website, just use your S3 website. So we just change that to the website. And here we can leave the protocol as HTTP only for now. The name we can leave as default. So here in the viewer policy, we can either choose HTTP and HTTPS. Alternatively, we just redirect all HTTP traffic to HTTPS. Since we don't need any security protections because our website doesn't access the database or anything, we just click do not enable security protection. And then if you know where your traffic is going to be served, then you can choose the CloudFront location to use. Most likely, my website is going to be used only in North America and Europe and then the rest we can just leave as default. And again, AWS gives you some free tier for all of these services. So unless you have crazy amount of traffic in the beginning, then it probably won't cost you anything. But make sure to do your own price uh, estimates. So here we click create distribution and then it's going to take some time to have it deployed. While it's being set up, we can go back to route 53 and actually change a couple things. Here in our A record, we need to click it and so it looks like we cannot change it. So we need to delete it and then we need to create a new record. 
And again, we're going to use alias, but this time, instead of pointing it to S3 bucket, we're going to point it to cloud front distribution. Well, I guess it looks like it's not available yet until it's deployed. We need to wait for that. And it looks like it's been deployed. So now we go back to route 53 and try to create a record with CloudFront as alias and says distribution is still not found. That's probably because we did not create a custom SSL slash TLS certificate. So here we go back to CloudFront, click edit and here where it says custom SSL certificate optional, it is actually not optional if you want to use our own domain name. We click request certificate and we can just request a public certificate. You most likely don't want a private certificate for a simple static website because they cost like 600 bucks a month or something like that. So we click next and then fully qualified domain name. So we're gonna add our domain name here. And then we also do the triple W prefix and then we choose the DNS validation and then click request. So here you see that the certificate has been successfully created, but further action is needed to complete the validation. So you click view certificate and here you see that it's pending validation. So what we do is go click this button, create records in route 53 and click create records. While it's pending validation, let's go back to CloudFront, make sure that we choose our new certificate here and then make sure you don't click this enabled button because it's $600 a month and most customers do not need this and leave everything by default and click save changes. And while it's deploying the new version of CloudFront, we can go back to Route 53 and add a new A record. So here we just leave this as default then go to alias, click alias to cloud front distribution. And here, if you click on it, it's going to tell you no resources found. But what we can do is go back to cloud front page, click on this copy button to copy the distribution domain name, paste it in here, remove HTTPS and slashes, and then click create records. And then we're going to add another record with triple W prefix again, and basically do the same thing, add to CloudFront distribution, paste it in here, remove HTTPS and slashes and click create records. So now when you go to your website, you may see this, that your website uses an unsupported protocol, or you may see some error about attackers trying to steal information or whatever. Well, that's because CloudFront still has not finished deploying the last version with the certificate. And also it's possible that if you run into some other DNS errors that the DNS propagation hasn't completed yet, so you just need to give it time. So it's been a couple hours and the DNS changes should have been propagated. Again, it may take up to 48 hours, but a couple hours is usually enough. But when we refresh this page, we get this error. This site can provide a secure connection, error says SSL version of Cypher mismatch, or when I access it on my phone, I get a 403 error, the request could not be satisfied. And the reason for that is because we need to make yet another change to CloudFront. So what we do is go back to CloudFront distribution that we created. Under settings, we click edit. And then under alternate domain name, we need to add the domain names that we want to use for this distribution. That's evgenyorubkov.com and the one with triple W. And then we save changes. And if you refresh now, it's not going to work immediately because it's going to make a new deployment. But after that is done, then we should be able to access our website with no problem. And actually, it looks like even before it finished deploying, if you refresh now, you can see that the website is now up and running. And if we go to triple W, it also works. And this is it. This is how you can use your S3 bucket to host your static website using your own custom domain. And if you want to know how to use VS Code to do everything AWS Lambda related without leaving VS Code, then watch this video.